Honey, we are back with the third and final episode in this three-week series under the umbrella, Letters, where we kicked off with a letter to the men, followed by a letter to the women, and now with the most important letter of all, a letter to ourselves, a letter to myself. I sat for a very honest heart-to-heart with myself while preparing for this episode and asked myself what I'd really like to say. What are some things I might know on some level in my subconscious, but would like to bring to the forefront of my mind? Speaking for myself, I know that I am a very stimulated individual. I am continuously putting myself in situations where my thinking is challenged, whether that is through reading books, listening to books, listening to podcasts, learning new skills, engaging in thought-provoking conversations, you name it. And it is safe to say that everyone in our generation is oftentimes highly stimulated as well. I mean, literally all you need to do is open Instagram or TikTok and you'll see what I mean. So what ends up happening is that some very important pieces of information and advice get lost in the loud clanging in our minds. It becomes very difficult for us to isolate the important nuggets of wisdom long enough to internalize, digest, and apply them in our lives. But if we're going to address society, and if we are going to be the kinds of people who are actually capable of making a practical difference in our world, we must first be people who can look themselves in the mirror and say the things that need to be said. Even Michael Jackson couldn't stop singing to and about the man in the mirror and healing the world and making it a better place. We too must teach ourselves to start with the man or woman in the mirror. Today's episode is a list of important things I've recently read or heard or thought about that I'd like us to chew on. A few things I'd be willing to physically write out in a form of a letter to myself so that I make sure I A, don't forget, and B, can hold myself accountable. So consider this a fair warning, my friend. This episode will be a confronting mirror. But I know that we can be brave and honest enough to face the things that rub us the wrong way and actually ask why. So let's begin the conversation. Hello, my friends, and welcome back or welcome here for the first time to the Being Allowed podcast. As always, I'm your host, Bibi Shea, and I'm very excited to bring you another conversation that I believe will bring us closer to the people that we hopefully want to be. Um, We live in a world that's super fast paced, and that tends to have an effect on us for sure. But that effect is not an effect that we necessarily notice right away. Sometimes it takes, you know, a big milestone in our lives where we're able to see like the before and after. عشان نلاحظ اللي هو إيه ده في حاجة تغيرت أو رد فعلي بقى مختلف أو the expectation بتاعي في الحاجة دي بقت مختلفة. بس on a daily basis, من كتر ما الحياة صوتها عالي and we're exposed to so much information all throughout the day, these things accumulate. وبنبقى مخنا على طول شغال وعلى طول في حاجات احنا مركزين فيها بس زي الحاجات المهمة ساعات بيكونوا drowned out في وسط كل الدوشة في وسط كل النويز بتاع الأيام and today's episode my intention with it is that we would really stop and maybe try to bring back to the surface a few things that are important a few things that will bring us back to the people that are actually able to become change makers in this world وناس فعلا عايزه تعمل فرق كويس قوي في حياتها في شويه حقائق كده النهارده هنتكلم على اربعه um ثلاثه منهم are quotes that i read uh, in books or on interviews او كده وواحدة منهم is just a conclusion that I've been journaling about recently ونفسي نحن نتكلم عنها um, and these are it's like a letter to ourselves to remind ourselves of these facts these important things that we need to make sure we don't forget so without any further ado the first one it's a quote 
It is not necessary to react to everything you notice. End quote by Stephen, who is the host of The Diary of a CEO. First of all, I love this guy. If you don't already know him, if you don't follow his podcast, Okada, I strongly recommend that you do. The man, like he talks about everything. And he like dissects uh, very thought-provoking topics. He's a very knowledgeable man. He posted this on Instagram and it literally made me stop dead in my tracks and analyze my life, analyze the way I live. It is not necessary to react to everything you notice. If you are anything like me, chances are you do react to everything you notice. Um, بيبقى صعب عليا قوي قوي ان انا ابقى ماشيه في الشارع والاحظ حاجه مش عجباني او تصرف غلط او حاجه حطت جوايا اسئله or whatever without actually stopping and commenting um, it's not just reacting it's like commenting وبلاقي نفسي انه كتير جدا مثلا ببقى بتمشى والاقي مثلا واحد رمى حاجه من عربيته اور وات ايفر ماي اميديت ريسبونس از اني برفع سماعه التليفون مثلا اكلم اختي بابايا مامتي اصحابي اي حد واحكي لهم بقى اللي هو يا جماعه ام سو فرستريتد اي جاست سو ا مان ثرو سمثينج فروم هيز كار اون تو ذا ستريت طيب يعني اول فير اند ويل اي بليف ذات يو نو ان اوردر فور تشينج تو هابن وي ماست رياكت In order for change to happen, we must have some sort of response. And if that response is in the form of a conversation, then that's where change matters. That's where change happens. And that's why I believe مثلاً, in things like podcasts and audiobooks and um, talk shows. Well, it's because we end up having conversations that are important, conversations that matter. But the reality is if we stop at every single thing, and have a response to every single thing that we notice, it's only going to end up backfiring. It's only going to end up having a negative effect on us. Imta balohaz in ibgad it has a negative effect is when I start reacting to everything that I notice whenever it comes to my loved ones. In this who are within my circles. مثلا انا ابقى خارجة مع اختي وخطبها او اهلي or whatever. وهم يعملوا حاجة صغيرة جدا Uh, on, in the grand scheme of things الحاجة دي مش فارقة خالص وحاجة مش مهمة خالص أنا لما لقي نفسي أن أنا بعلق وبقف بعلق um, يا إما لنفسي بس معظم الوقت عشان أنا واحدة بتتكلم كتير ومش بعرف أو يحط لساني جوا بوقي I end up commenting out loud which ends up having a negative effect on me ends up having a negative effect on the people around me In general, I think before we react, first of all, a lot of the times in this podcast, we talk about the difference between reacting and responding. I would like to think that we are by now people who respond, not react. But before we react or respond, whatever the situation calls for, I wish that we could just take a moment. I wish that I could take a moment. وفكر in the grand scheme of things. Is it حاجة مستهلة إني أريأكت عليها ولا لا؟ Or if it's just a some, just something small that I can let go of. Or something small that I can realize. لو أنا علقت مش هتفرق. كل اللي هيعمله إن هيعمل negativity جوايا. في الحالة دي هل تستاهل إني أعلق ولا لا. Dear self, before you react or respond to things in this world, take a moment, pause for a second, think about if this reaction or response is necessary. If it's going to be able to have a positive impact or not. Because if the answer is no, maybe just don't react. Maybe just don't respond and let the thing go. All right, on to the second one. It's a quote. It says, stop having relationship problems with people you are not in a relationship with. End quote. Also by Stephen, the diary of a CEO. Balohaz awi awi bordul hatadif nafsi. Uh, which is why it's important for me to say it in a letter to myself is stop having relationship problems with people you are not in a relationship with. Now, let's differentiate between being in a relationship with someone and not being in a relationship with someone. And I'm going to assume that by relationship here, we mean romantic relationship. Um, when you're in a romantic relationship with someone, you are hopefully thinking long term, you are you know, creating goals, plans, dreams, ambitions together because 
eventually the goal is to merge both your lives into one life. Therefore, whatever someone else's uh, decisions in their own life is, to a large extent, قررات الشخص التاني بتأثر عليا eventually. Someone else's, that other person, my significant other's decisions or the way that they're choosing to live their lives, the small حاجات اللي بيعملوها في الآخر هتأثر على حياتي أنا um, one way or another. Again, this is not in every way and we cannot live our lives this way. We have to understand that even in a relationship, we are two separate people. Um, but دي, لا, دي more or less is what the difference is between being in a relationship with someone and just being friends with someone or being a co-worker with someone or حتى uh, the relationship, uh, family relationship مع بعض أو كده. إنه Yeah, sure, we meet every once in a while or we talk a lot or we're super close or whatever. But at the end of the day, um, that person's decisions or that person's like quirks or personality, little like details related to the personality, but what we end up doing sometimes when we are extra invested people or when we are people who... Um, have a very clear kida idea of what is right and what is wrong with kida is that sooner or later we end up having relationship problems with people we're not actually in a relationship with with people we can actually manage and afford to remind ourselves very consciously انه لازم يبقى في فرق بيني وبين الشخص ده من جوايا انا الشخص ده اختار يعيش الطريقه دي الشخص ده اختار um, يي ريسبوند بالطريقه الفلانيه واحنا خارجين الشخص ده قرر وات ايفر دي اختيارات الشخص الثاني مش اختياراتي انا مش قراراتي انا and then comes the responsibility بقى بتاعت كل علاقه ما بينها وما بين الثانيه ف if like i'm super close to that person i'm really good friends or whatever i will be able to come and speak the truth and love to that person and say hey i think maybe you need to work on this or whatever but all of that When I'm not taking it personally, I'm not and I'm not taking it personally. It is not a personal situation. That person is a separate person to who I am. I am my own separate person as well. Therefore, you know, depending on the relationship, we give advice accordingly. But stop having relationship problems with people you're not in a relationship with. On to the third one. It's a quote that goes as follows. Discomfort is what happens when we are on the precipice of change. Unfortunately, we often confuse it for unhappiness and cope with the latter while running from the former. It usually takes a bit of discomfort to break through to a new understanding, to release a limiting belief, to motivate ourselves to create real change. End quote. Brianna Wyest, I think that's how you pronounce her name, from 101 essays that will change the way you think. Um, this quote really hit me. I started listening to the audiobook and reading the actual book, Bam and Mix Kida. And I read this quote and it really, yani, again, was very confronting. That the idea of discomfort, we run away from discomfort at all costs. Beged at all costs. In order to avoid discomfort, momentary discomfort, we don't work out. We choose to sit on the couch, watch TV instead. Uh, instead of uh, embracing the discomfort of maybe starting a clean eating habit or a healthy lifestyle habit, the habit that is more comfortable, the habit that we are more accustomed to, the habit that we're more used to, وهو ان انا وانا قاعده كان بقى بتفرج على التلفزيون بقى باكل شيبسي باكل شوكولاته I'm binging all the, all the time um, I choose يبقى قدامي على المنيو a healthy option and an unhealthy option I choose the unhealthy option because that's more comfortable because that's less resistance because I'm more familiar اني اكل الحاجه الفلانيه دي وطبعا examples من دي من هنا للصبح على the ways by which we choose comfort over discomfort and we think that the discomfort is a bad thing we think that the second i feel uncomfortable i have to respond by pushing that thing away and returning back to comfort the thing is though that comfort really takes us nowhere and there's a difference between comfort and rest 
In fact, sometimes resting in itself is uncomfortable. If we are the kinds of people who are used to being on the go all the time, are used to uh, doing a million things at the same time, and the schedule is not going to be able to do it, and the schedule is not going to be rest. دي حاجة هتبقى اللي هو لا أنا مش مرتاحة خالص للفكرة دي. Um, but the thing is, whatever it is, most of the time, discomfort comes out with a much bigger return on investment than comfort. لو أنا واتكلمت uh, أنا على الموضوع ده في episode قبل كده عن the idea of the calloused mind and I'll link to it below in the show notes. The idea of the calloused mind إن إحنا إحنا مخنا وعقلنا are so soft they're so comfortable the reality of the matter is that life is hard which is literally the cornerstone of this podcast that life is hard and life will throw curveballs and it will blindside us by surprise all the time if we are comfortable all the time if we're not used to putting ourselves in situations that are slightly more uncomfortable than what we maybe have been used to قبل كده يبقى لما الصعوبات بتاعت الحياه اللي هي inevitable قوي تحصل هنلاقي نفسنا ما عندناش التولز ما عندناش الاكويبمنت ان اور ارسنال اللي هيساعدنا ان احنا نواجه الحاجات الصعبه بس putting ourselves continuously in situations where we are uncomfortable example forging a habit on a daily basis ان انا اتمرن اتمرن ده معناه ايه؟ معناها ان هتوجع معناها ان عضلاتي هتشد معناها ان وانا في نص التمرين I will be out of breath وهبقى بنهج وبعرق ومش مستريحة وهبقى عارفة انه في النص ساعة او في الساعة اللي انا بتمرن فيها دي انا ممكن قوي كنت ابقى قاعدة على الكنبة بتفرج على التلفزيون انا هختار اعرق واتعب وابقى out of breath because that is uncomfortable right now But it builds a callous mind in my brain. It makes me stronger. It makes me more resilient. هتخليني أعرف أواجه الصعوبات اللي الحياة 100% هتحطها قدامي with more ease, with more practice. I will not be out of practice. I will be very much in practice of doing the hard thing, facing the day harder. ف- let me just read that quote again. Discomfort is what happens when we are on the precipice of change. Therefore, ده بقى جزء الكومنت بتاعي انه لو انا في في discomfort, uncomfortable situation, let's take working out since that's the example we're using. If I am working out and kind of like including this into my daily routine, هعرف انه في تغيير هيحصل on the other side of that. If I stick to this very uncomfortable habit, the change will be that I am stronger, that I am healthier. That I am more well balanced, doctor, and if you dopamine, doctor, in my brain, and I'm not I'm not doctor, and so discomfort is what happens when we are on the precipice of change. Unfortunately, we often confuse it for unhappiness and cope with the latter while running from the former. Coping with the unhappiness while running away from the change, running away from the change that comes with putting ourselves in uncomfortable situations. It usually takes a bit of discomfort to break through to a new understanding or to release a limiting belief to motivate ourselves to create real change. And so as you are writing this letter to yourself today, ask yourself, what is the real change you are craving in your life? Where do you want to see change in your life, practically speaking? And then... Embrace the idea of the discomfort that is inevitably going to come with that process. The process of introducing change into your life is going to come with discomfort. So embrace that. In what areas might you be uncomfortable today as you work towards the change? And maybe every time you're in this uncomfortable situation, remind yourself of the reward. Remind yourself of the fact that you're building a calloused mind. You're becoming an overall much stronger person who's able to withstand much more difficult circumstances because now your mind has been in training long enough. It is calloused enough that when change arises and it's good, we're able to embrace it. And when change arises and it's hard because life is hard, we're also equipped to deal with it. And last but not least... 
the very last thing, and this is the thing I have personally been journaling about and thinking about Gamed Aoi, uh, but it's also something that has arisen because of uh, my master's degree and the research that I did in that area. And as a kid, um philosophical literature that was very much existential who am I and why am I here and because of that even though I lost in master's but this has been continuously the lens through which I see life and كده دايما لما لما بيحصل chapters جديدة في حياتي أو حاجة جديدة I pause and I ask myself the important questions uh, اللي and so this is something that I've been thinking about a wee recently consider yourself uh, to be a project you are a project you are a project forever incomplete and therefore forever imperfect but always a fertile soil for prettier, more resilient trees and flowers. I think where we struggle sometimes is in we are thinking that no, okay, uh, we're very disappointed in ourselves when we're not where we expected ourselves to be or when we don't achieve the goals that we expected ourselves to achieve or when we are disappointed كده, as though we are supposed to be on the على طول we have the thing figured out we constantly have يعني have this like a subconscious mindset ان ان احنا ازاي نكون we still haven't had this thing figured out ازاي ابتدي حاجة وما كنش already like a professional فيها and the concept of like gradual growth or gradual improvement especially in this day and age that's like super fast paced and super كده you know highly stimulated طول الوقت وبتاع بيبقى صعب علينا قوي ان احنا نبقى humble enough ان احنا ندرك ان احنا we are projects we're not a finished product we are project projects in fact we will continue being projects until the day we die عمر ما هنبقى واصلين لمرحلة ونقول اه انا كده وصلت انا كده انا كده بقى I'm perfect مش محتاجة ولا اقرا كتب ولا journal ولا اشتغل على نفسي خلاص لانه انا وصلت مرحله انه I'm perfect if you expected that this moment would come let me burst your bubble by saying it never will come we will be projects until we die there will always be room for improvement until we die we are imperfect we will stay imperfect does that mean ان احنا بقى نرفع رجلينا على الكنبه ونقول خلاص ليه اشتغل لان انا I'm gonna continuously be imperfect وعمري ما هوصل لا طبعا احنا على طول let's say you improve so much and you achieve a specific goal that you want to achieve there will constantly be other parts of your personality other parts of your character other goals dreams ambitions that you will want to work towards and that is why you are continuously evolving continuously improving and that is where الحته الثانيه بقى بتيجي into mind انه oh it's good to have an awareness of the fact that we will forever be imperfect projects but it is equally as important to acknowledge the fact that our lives are a very beautiful and fertile soil التربه بتاعت حياتنا بجد تسمح لان احلى ورد واكبر واحلى واقوى شجر يكبر عليها Considering that we are projects means we are considering that we are a piece of land that is open and wide. What we eat, we choose in no yadil araf. It's a piece of land. كلها تراب وكلها وسخة وبتاع. Therefore, مش هشتغل عليها. That's one attitude. أو إذا it's a piece of land. كلها تراب وسويل وكده. معناها إني ممكن أزرع فيها أحلى ورد. ممكن أزرع فيها أحلى شجر. واشتغل from that perspective. So, letter to yourself. You are a piece of fertile land. You are a project. You're incomplete. As, you know, the trees bear fruit, they're going to need pruning. هنحتاج كل شوية نيجي نشيل الليفز اللي ميتة نشيل الحاجات اللي بايزة علشان نمك space for new things that can grow. Once we consider ourselves to be projects, It opens doors for brand new opportunities, brand new options. So consider yourself to be a project. 
take your life from there, understand what that means, see what it means to yourself. And very, as I close, um, I said, you know, these four four quotes or three quotes من بروية واحدة من مني يعني um, are things that are very important for us to keep in mind as we go about our days. But it's important to also meet ourselves with kindness. And it is also important to take responsibility for our own lives. In the previous two episodes, I asked the men to take responsibility for their decisions and their actions. And I asked the women to take responsibility for their actions and their their decisions um, and their responses. In the same way, and I'm sharing this message with you. It is important that as we grow, And as we learn and as we improve and move forward, it's important that we kindly and gently with ourselves, but to also be aware in the moment that the pain and the pain are not going to be able to be more stern with ourselves, more strict with ourselves, and we can actually do a move so that we know how to take responsibility for our actions, for our decisions. لأن the fertile land is not going to grow itself. We must take responsibility for how we grow that land, for what we make of our pro- our projects, which are our lives. To yourself, you are doing the absolute best that you can on most days. And on days when you're not ask that you show up for yourself that you take responsibility for your life so that you can always come back and say that you are doing the best that you can with what you have you've been given so much you are provided with so much you have a heart that beats that is kind that is compassionate that looks to the world around it with kindness and you have a mind that is sharp and capable of so much growth you can be learning so much you can be expanding to brand new depths and brand new widths and heights I ask that you take responsibility for your life that you show up for your life that not a single day passes that you can look but that you can't look back at yourself and say I actually did the absolute best that I could You were created to make a difference. You were created to leave an impact, to leave a mark on your world. So as you become more of the project that you are, as you expand and grow and improve, may you continue leaving your mark and may your mark be positive. We are all responsible for our lives. We are all only responsible for our lives. ما نقدرش ان احنا نتحكم في حياة الناس اللي حوالينا بس نقدر نتحكم في الريسبونسز بتاعتنا وفي قراراتنا احنا اليومية والاسبوعية والشهرية والسنوية. We can control what choices, what decisions we make. So as we bring the four points that we uh, pondered upon today to the forefront of our minds, may we become good stewards. of the things we've been given. May we be good citizens. May we leave positive impacts on the world around us. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Being Allowed podcast. If you haven't done so already, please like and share and subscribe and leave a review below, whether you are on um, YouTube or on um, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please leave a review. It really makes a huge difference. And I thought I'd uh, take this opportunity to tell you guys that every week a new YouTube video goes live on my YouTube channel, Bibi Shay. Um, that is every Thursday. This podcast is also aired live every Tuesday on YouTube as well. And you can find um, me and everything that I do and all the content and all the blog posts and articles that I write on my website 
bbshay.com. It's always being updated. And if you'd like to stay up to date always, please subscribe to the mailing list. I promise I don't spam. I just uh, update you with maybe thought-provoking thoughts every once in a while. And if not, I just send you bingeable content that you can read on the toilet or if you're in a waiting room or if you're just sitting bored and tired. You know, I just give you stuff to nibble on. Anyway, thank you so, so much for being here and I will see you again next time.